While the rain is starting to ease across Greater Sydney, the flood emergency is far from over tonight. Homes are still inundated and the SES continues to perform rescue after rescue. We have reporters in key locations. Mark Reddy begins our coverage along the Hawkesbury River in Sydney's northwest. It's not just a feeling of flood deja vu. The water through Ted Bash's house is deeper than ever before. There was nothing like that last time. Now it's, 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 it's just crazy. And the, and the rain hasn't stopped. The Hawkesbury is still rising and with it the financial toll. It's going to be a hell of a lot of damage. I mean, all my floorboards are gone and all that. I'm not insured. I can't get insurance. So, yeah, we'll have to see what we're going to do. A few doors up, a mother and her three children are trapped on the second floor of their home. Others are nervously watching their backyards being swallowed up by the incoming tide. We've been here 25 years and this year it's been the worst. Emergency funding is now available for 23 local government areas. People on the east coast are doing it really tough at the moment and it is clear that the crisis is not over yet. But the escalating danger is cause for calls to find solutions. Someone should actually sort of take a look and do the right thing, either with the dam, with the construction of homes everywhere, and not having a plan for the drainage. Defence personnel are door knocking those in the danger zone. Yeah, no, yeah. Muddy, murky water and debris has drifted in from the swollen Hawkesbury. Wading through it has become a workout for the weary. What you can normally see here is a street that backs onto farmland and a golf course. Locals say they now have their own lake for the very first time, but the water views are unwelcome. At the moment, there's only one road out. For some in the region, they're not just deciding whether to stay or evacuate, they're contemplating leaving altogether. Mark Reddy, ABC News, Sydney. And Mark Reddy is live for us in Pitt Town. Mark, the Prime Minister will visit the region tomorrow. Juanita, Anthony Albanese flew home to Australia from Europe today. Tomorrow, he and Premier Dominic Perrette will begin touring flood-damaged regions to assess the damage themselves. He said that early preparations are underway for an early clean-up where possible, and that will involve an additional 50 ADF who will join the 100 troops already on the ground. Juanita? Mark Reddy, thank you. Cayman Gok is nearby in Windsor. Cayman, the rain has eased off there, but there's still a lot of heartache ahead. Winita, the Weather Bureau says while there's only a few showers about, it will take a while for the sheer volume of floodwaters to head out to sea. So residents here in the Hawkesbury, they could be cut off or unable to return to their homes for quite some time. That means that the delivery of supplies by boat will be crucial in the coming days. Streets have become rough seas, homes and sheds turned into islands. The relentless rise of the Hawkesbury was fast and cut communities off quickly. It was only like a few days ago it wasn't even flooded and now it's like this. Floodwaters have isolated residents on Sydney's northwest fringe. The state emergency service has become a critical lifeline for many. Taking food, medicine, even generators to those who can't go anywhere. They've been isolated now for a few days, so they're starting, their supplies are starting to go down. Communications is out in some places. I feel so sorry for these poor, you know, residents up here, and they must say, uh, yeah, so it's, it's tiring for them, no doubt. It's been a tough few nights for Swaran and Sequinda Singh. Their northwest Sydney home is only 30 kilometres away, but they're stuck in their grocery store, which is running out of produce. No much grocery, no milk, no bread. No supply. But the community spirit is soothing their sorrows. We feel like at home. Yeah, because our people very good here, community very nice. When you look at some of the damage and the properties along the Hawkesbury River, you realise there's so little some people could have done. This is a two-storey property. These people had to be evacuated yesterday and the river has just completely swallowed it up. It will be a while before the bridges uh, come back out on the Hawkesbury uh, River. Um, and it will take a while, as uh, the Bureau have said, for the water to be able to get away. Although the danger came quickly, it'll take far longer to disappear. Cayman Gok, ABC News, Sydney.
Tens of thousands of people are impacted across large areas of Sydney. Flooding from the Hawkesbury Nepean River system is threatening communities in the city's northwest, while the overflowing Georges River has left homes and businesses inundated in Sydney's southwest. Well, Phoebe Bowden is at Chipping Norton, one of the affected areas along the Georges River. Uh, Phoebe, some welcome news has just come through. Juanita, the SES says that for communities along this section of the Georges River, the risk of flooding is over for now. But this morning it was a different story. The car behind me was completely submerged. And while residents are happy to see the water disappear just as quickly as it came, they have been left with a muddy mess. For residents of Lansvale in Sydney's southwest, this is their second clean-up in just three days. It's just the latest example of flooding here becoming more frequent. It happened in 80, 1986 and 88, then it didn't happen for 28 years. And so it was 2016 and 2020, and now it's happened four times this year. But the speed of this week's flooding has still managed to surprise locals. Not even 24 hours we went under so quick. And it usually takes a week of constant, constant, constant rain and we still don't flood. Linda Thomas says at one point the water came up to her chest. Chest high. Chest high in my driveway. And it was pretty cold. The water level is lower today and the damage is easier to see. All the houses they have like dirt on them from the flood. And it's like all water rubbish. Homeowners here in Lansvale say it costs about $10,000 a year to insure their homes against floods. For most, that's simply unaffordable. It also means it's harder to sell their properties. And that's a problem across the state. It's simply uh, the definition of insanity to rebuild homes back in these areas where they're getting flooded so frequently that simply can't be covered by the private insurance market. The Commonwealth and New South Wales governments have agreed to activate a range of disaster-related payments. And that included everything from support for individuals and families to low-interest loans for farmers, for small businesses, support for councils. The economic and budget costs will be really substantial as well. We've seen the National Farmers Federation talk about the impact on food prices that we expect to see. But for residents here, the concerns are more immediate. You just want to cry. You just want to pack up and walk away. But what can you do? Just start to clean. The fear is there will be more clean-ups to come. Phoebe Bowden, ABC News, Sydney. A cargo ship remains stranded off the coast of Sydney for a second night, waiting to be towed back to shore. The ship remains anchored off Botany Bay, accompanied by three tugboats. The vessel experienced an engine failure yesterday and attempts to rescue the 21 crew members were aborted. We'll wait until around uh, daylight uh, before uh, we, uh, we look to bring the vessel into, uh, into Port Botany. It's hoped conditions will ease by 3 o'clock tomorrow morning so the ship can arrive for repairs by the afternoon. The intense weather system has already delivered some areas up to 800 millimetres of rain. As it moves north, there are warnings for parts of the Hunter, Central and Mid-North Coast. Andrew Lobb is live for us on the Central Coast. Andrew, there are evacuation orders for that region. That's right, Juanita. Yes, we're here at um, Tugra. There's about 20 communities around the Tugra Lakes that are under evacuation orders. Uh, we got out earlier today. It's a very, um, a lot of creeks come into this area. It's very tidal affected as well. So residents were watching the waters come up. Um, many have um, made arrangements to either move to their upstairs level. Some have decided to, uh, to move out. There's not much we can do anymore, so might as well go somewhere a bit safer. No, any power or internet, so... May as well leave. We've already got water through the house and yeah, more more's going to come. If it's flooded, forget it. Turn around, find an alternate route. Because what it means is we've got our volunteers putting themselves at risk, the people driving the water at risk. We need those resources elsewhere. So the latest is uh, an evacuation centre has um, been set up over at the entrance. Uh, there were already a couple of dozen people there. Uh, there's another high tide uh, due about midnight, so it'll be a bit of an anxious watch. In the meantime, there's also been an evacuation warning for parts of the Hunter. Now, that includes um, 
the Broke and Bulga areas near Singleton. Uh, so for now it's around Budgie Woy, uh, Tugra Lakes and waiting for the, uh, the high tide at midnight. Andrew Lobb reporting there.